Hey everybody, this is Brad from Johnson Small Engines, better known as the One Hand Mechanic. If I can do it, you can too. Today we have here a Craftsman 24 inch electric start self propelled two stage snow thrower. And I just want to show you, in my opinion, how to start and operate it for anybody having any issues or just wanted to learn how to operate the machine and start it. And I want to show you the sticker down below, which actually shows the model number of this because this is a newer one and they make so many different kind of models so this is a model number 31 as and the rest of the numbers are right here uh, this is actually made by mtd this is actually made in 06 of 2019 i will probably put a, a picture of this up on the uh um, on the i'll probably put a picture of this somewhere so you guys can see it to see if it may match up with yours as far as getting this thing started we're going to start with that if you have any problems starting this machine after you watch this, I will put in the link in the description below how to pull this carburetor off and repair it, how to diagnose it. I have all the videos up that will help you get this thing running if it doesn't start. And also, this is something that I have been using for a few years now, and I really like it a lot. This is Aspen. I'm also going to put it's Aspen fuel. This is a four-cycle fuel. This is a non-ethanol 92-octane fuel that you can buy uh, locally, most likely at your lawnmower shops in your area. I'll put a link into the description to find someone local in your area to buy it from. You cannot buy this in the box stores as of right now. You may be able to in the future, but this is actually better than a lot of the other fuels out there that are um, like the, um, I'm not gonna say any names, but the products that are out there right now on the, on the shelves right now, this is far superior in my opinion. It doesn't have a lot of the bad um, bad stuff inside it, and it's just a great fuel. It helps for storage, and if you use this, you most likely will have no more carburetor problems as long as you don't let it sit for more than a few years at a time. But it's great fuel. It eliminates our ethanol issues, a lot of the ethanol issues, and the storing purposes. So let's get to it here. Go ahead and uh, fill your gas tank up with the fuel. Always check your oil before you start the machine. Turn it sideways, have it turn, a quarter turn. I'm gonna wipe it off. Now this was just um, changed, so it's gonna be very, it's gonna be very clean. So you just want it between the two dots right there. There's a little bar graph, and you want it between the two dots. And there is a little bit of an issue. I don't know why they put a dipstick that has two little nubbies on that side, and it has one nubby there. Well, the dipstick itself has two nubbies and one nubby here. If you do it reversed, it will get stuck. So be careful when you put it in. And out, and it's pretty much perfect on the marks right there. We're gonna go ahead and go over to controls to start it. We have your choke, which is here. Okay, you have choke, run, and choke. So when you're on choke, that means it's on, and that's for run. You have a primer when it's really cool conditions, like when it's snowing, you wanna use that a few times. Usually you don't need it after you get it running and it's been running for a while, but that definitely helps prime up the fuel to the carburetor when it's very cold. You have your throttle down here, all the way over to stop, which it says here, it is stop. And if you leave it over here, that is an ignition stop. So it will not, you can crank it as much as you want, it won't start. You have to at least have it about half throttle. I like to start in about half throttle, three quarter throttle. I don't like to start any engines up at full speed. It's just not real good for the engine to start at full speed, especially when it's that cold outside. And then you have your switch here, that's actually a safety switch also. If this is not in, if it's not clipped in, it will not run. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and leave it at half throttle. We're gonna go ahead and prime it one, two times. We're gonna throw a choke on, switches in. Our pull cord is right here. They actually put a, an extra um, shut off for you, an extra key here, just in case you lose one. I recommend definitely drilling a hole through your key, putting a little rope on there and, and attaching it to the handle, handle somewhere so you don't lose it just in case it pops out. We're gonna go ahead and give this a pull. It should fire up within one or two pulls. much it as far as starting it it's not too bad there is an electric starter so i'm going to show you how to do that okay so the electric starter is over here 
and it's definitely the way to go in very cold conditions like when there's snow on the ground so it's uh the, the pool court is good when you already have it warmed up and i was just showing you that it runs and it runs fine you can use the pool cord if you have this in very warm conditions then yes you can use the pool cord usually it's 32 degrees or below and the engine oil can get very thick the engine will not spin fast enough to get the uh the engine to start that's usually the case so this starter electric starter will spin the engine fast it doesn't start the engine it just turns the engine over okay so what you want to do is everything that i showed you before on how to start it on the, the throttle controls and the chokes you do that first then you're going to plug in your extension cord now i have heard a lot of people um complain about not complain but a lot of comments about the extension cord being long and i say don't go over 10 or 15 foot of extension cord you you can get lucky for a long time and then you don't so if you can keep your extension cord below 15 feet, that would be great. If you can't, you can't. But um, a 16 gauge or a 14 gauge wire is also recommended, nothing thinner than that. And then you just go ahead and plug it into your outlet. And then we're gonna go ahead and do everything we did over here. We have it set at half throttle. I'm not gonna prime it because we just did. I'm gonna turn the choke on, switch is on, and we're just gonna go ahead and push the button. I wouldn't recommend pushing this button for more than five seconds because it, if it doesn't, if your engine doesn't start right away, especially using the electric starter, there might be a problem with the engine itself, like a fuel related problem or something else going on. pull that switch out you can idle it down to stop um, whichever you, you want to do you can do either or idling it down is probably preferable as far as um, how this operates now this is a posi traction which means both wheels should turn when you get your, your controls are up here and you have drive control here it's pretty self-explanatory get your handle down on your drive control you have your forward speeds and reverse speeds i would definitely not have the handle down when you're moving forward and reverse it's just it's a there's a rubber disc down in the drive system and when you have your handle down on the rubber disc it's actually you, you won't be able to shift very easily if at all so just make sure you put it into each gear uh, and then go so if you're not going fast enough you can just move it put your gear and go and reverse you have two speeds in reverse over here now you have the auger handle here and it's pretty much just down and go and that'll also self propel you right there you have your control for your chute over here and you can turn it left and right and then you have your this is a manual tilt shoot right here so you just loosen this and then you can tilt it up or down if you can leave it up higher to let it flow better it'll then a lot of people try to go like this to shoot it straight out it, tend, it tends to get backed up i can also give you a tip on how to make the snow come out a little bit easier for you and that would be silicone spray every time you use your machine i recommend taking any kind of silicone spray that you can find i mean you spray it up inside your chute like so, and come around to your front augers and spray it off in here. You have to do this before you go out and blow snow, and this will really help non-stick for the snow, especially in uh, very moist conditions and very heavy snow. If you just let this set up and dry, you can do it. If you do it every time you're done with your machine, actually you would have to wait until you uh, until the snow melts. So there really can't be any snow on it when you do this. Just Go ahead and lather it up. Now I also, since we're here, I wanna show you, if, you're, if your machine's not performing very well, the first thing you do wanna check is, one, you, you do have an auger belt tension you wanna check, but also, if these start to spin freely, okay, these are all locked in. These are all locked in by shear pins. They have four shear pins. There's one here, there's one here, one here, and one over here. Okay, these are designed to shear. That's why they call them shear pins. I would definitely get into your uh, manual, go online, buy yourself a couple extra shear pins just so you have them. They do shear. They're designed to shear. If anything caught gets caught between the blade, like a rock between the blade and the hub back here, it can actually stop it dead in its tracks. Instead of ruining your transmission, it'll shear a pin. That's why they're there. So you should go ahead and uh, get yourself a couple of them. So that pretty much sums it up for how to start and operate a Craftsman 24 inch electric star snow thrower. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Tell your friends about my channel, please subscribe, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.